Welcome to Casey's Corner. This is a very different kind of setup. Um, we're going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to get a little real and raw. This is kind of, if you're watching, this is what you're seeing. If you're listening, <laughs> this is what you're hearing. Uh, I'm just sitting at my desk and I put a microphone and my computer camera on and this is going to be an episode that is um, a little raw, like I said, a little real. Um, no, a lot real. It's going to be a lot real. I might cry, so bear with me. But this is a topic that has been weighing really heavily on my heart, in my head. Um, it's something I talk a lot about or share a lot about over on my Instagram. It's it's about my journey and... Um, there's a lot of you who kind of have started following me because of my weight loss journey and there are people who are following me for Disney reasons and for whatever, however you found me, cool. But this is the episode where I'm going to talk a little bit more about my health and my wellness journey. I'm trying so hard not to call it a weight loss journey because I am doing a lot of work to get away from that kind of mentality, but we're going to dive in and this is going to be a little bit of that precursor to some guests that I'll be having on my show uh, in the next couple weeks and I hope you accept this as a little bit of therapy for myself and maybe you can identify with some of the thoughts and experiences that I've had and hopefully could be helpful to you. So... <laughs> So I'm going to start this off by saying this is purely my experience. This is the um, path, for lack of a better word, that I've taken. It's been super bumpy. It's been windy. It's been paused. It's been sped up. Um, there's a lot of healing that is still happening for me mentally, physically, um, emotionally, and by no means is this any sort of, um, what's the word I want? Diagnosis? No, that's not the words. Any sort of medical expertise or advice. This is just my experience that I'm sharing with you. And I feel like this has become a safe space for me to do so. So we're going to take it back and kind of reflect on this whole like self-awareness that I've been gaining and kind of understanding the root of a lot of my body image issues and my body confidence issues and my, you know, obsession with diet culture. And I think that generationally, a lot of millennials um, and older have experienced this kind of um body image distortion, right? I wish, <laughs> I wish, I wish that I was in today's day and age growing up with such body positivity, at least, you know, I'm seeing so much more body diversity in advertising and clothes that are more um, comfortable for every body type and even just more comfort in your individual body is being so much more promoted now. And I feel like that was not something that was around when I was growing up. And I look back and it's so funny because there are so many like memes out there now and different Instagram accounts that are kind of calling this stuff out about the Y2K era and how warped it made all of us feel about our body image, right? Like pictures of Paris Hilton, Britney Spears, uh, all the like the girl groups of the Y2K era wearing those super low jeans and halter tops or crop tops and, all, and so skinny and so um, just unrealistic in body types. And then you have... The tabloids. Do you remember? Like, I vividly remember 
going to the grocery store with my parents and seeing the magazines that are on the checkout and everything, everything had to do with some sort of celebrity weight judgment. Oh, this one's too skinny. Oh, this one's too fat. I remember seeing uh, Jessica Simpson and Jennifer Love Hewitt. Do you remember those images of them where it was like, oh my gosh, how could they be so fat? And in my head, I'm like, wait, that's what I look like. That's what I like. I'm not seeing anything wrong with that, but you're telling me that it's wrong. So subconsciously, I'm wrong and my body's wrong and I need to change myself as well. If this ideal person, you know, again, Jessica Simpson, um, Jennifer Love Hewitt, they were like iconic in the early 2000s and they're now fat. They're now unhealthy. They have cellulite. Oh my goodness. The amount of cellulite covers in on magazines, right? So here I am seeing all these images and realizing that I identify with them, but the messaging is that that's wrong. So my body was wrong. I can just remember feeling like my body was always different. Like always, even younger, like middle school, elementary school, going to friends' pools and just feeling like my body was so different. I had thick thighs. I had, you know, a belly. My arms were bigger. How come all these other girls were so tiny and so athletically built and everything and not really understanding why um, I felt ashamed of my body too. And listen, I mean, no disrespect to my parents. I love you both. (laughs) You know this. But I watched both of my parents at a very young age go to like Weight Watchers meetings. I would go with them. And in my head, like I look back now and it it makes me so upset to think about having negative connotations to your body or to your meal plans or everything. I don't know. I just, I look back and I realize that Diet culture became part of my everyday life at such a young age and limiting what I, you know, not necessarily me because I was watching my parents go through it, but this idea of having to limit what you're eating or wanting to change your body. And I mean, like my mom has always been, you know, thin and like I never understood why she wanted to make these changes. I don't know. I think it's hard because my mom has always been smaller than me. So hearing her feeling the need to lose weight and everything, it was like, well, if if I've, if I've always been bigger than you, like clearly I have to too, but I digress. I feel like this is more (laughs) things I should be saving for my therapist, but you guys are getting it on Casey's Corner this week. Congratulations. Welcome to my therapy session. No, no, no. I just, I feel like that there's a lot of information here that I've absorbed over the past decade or so that I want to just kind of word vomit onto you to see if it can help you in any way. And really, this is just an evolution that I am now accepting and I am riding it out that I feel finally confident enough to publicly share it. So that's where I'm at with this whole thing. I promise. I promise there is a uh, greater good rather than just me venting. Promise. So let's go back. Feeling like I've always been dieting, feeling like diet culture has always been part of my life and part of my psyche, which is terrible. And I'm really... Um, finally doing the work to get rid of it, which we'll get to. But I think that, you know, it kind of came to a head um, around the time of my wedding where I had purchased a wedding dress. Um, It was (laughs) Vera Wang on Newberry Street in Boston was closing. So they had all of their sample dresses at an amazing price. And um, it was one of those things where, I felt so good in the moment and so good in the dress and everything. I bought the dress. Uh, I was engaged. Like, don't think that I just like bought a random wedding dress. Jay and I (laughs) were engaged at the time. My mom and I went, tried on some dresses, found one that I loved. And 
it was, you know, it was a dream come true to have this Vera Wang hot couture wedding dress that I was going to wear for my wedding. So it was purchased. It was put away uh, until our wedding day. And well, obviously alterations and everything. But it was early on in our engagement that we bought it. So by the time it came for alterations and everything, I had gained a little weight. And we went to this seamstress, this local seamstress, to bring my dress to and have her alter it, you know, hemming and everything. And it was tight, okay? Like, the dress was tight. And the seamstress was so rude and so condescending. She looked at my mom and I and was like, why did you buy this dress? This dress is way too small for you. You're never going to fit in this dress. This was a waste of your money. Here I am with my dream wedding dress standing next to me. And like this woman is telling me I'm never going to be able to fit into it. Like, are you kidding me? So that became the crash course of or the crash diet for shedding for the wedding, which not smart. <laughs> um, for the, I think like that was such a big there was even a TV show, right, called Shedding for the Wedding or something ridiculous like that at that time too, like around 2011, 2010, 2011. Um, and I put myself on a very strict diet. Um, it was super low calories. It was meal replacement shakes. It was working out two times a day. Um, and I got into my damn wedding dress. <laughs> they even had to take it in. But... I greatly restricted myself and I got what my goal was. So in my head, the restriction, the deprivation, the extreme diet worked. It worked for me. So in my head, yep, it works. This is what I got to do. This is where I need to be. Okay. So did this whole crash diet thing for the wedding. In the meantime, Jay and I moved to LA from Massachusetts that's a whole other mind trip for you, right? Is moving to Los Angeles because you could be completely average sized in Massachusetts, but now you're obese in LA. Let's just be real. So that was really hard for me as well, was going out and just feeling like my body does not match this scene. Um, I was so uncomfortable even at this lowest weight after my wedding, and I still felt out of place. Sucked, okay? <laughs> like, it, it's always been in the back of my mind. So here we are in LA, um, and I was doing food events. I was doing married life. It's great. We have amazing friends. Um, I am feeling actually very confident in myself and in the situation. It's a good time, right? And uh, I have an amazing job where I am always around food, <laughs> really good food, too, whether it was uh, when I was doing recipe development or restaurant reviews for KISS FM and for My FM and the different radio stations here in LA. And then when I went to go work for Wolfgang Puck, like, hello, I'm around amazing food all the time. <laughs> so I didn't limit myself, right? Like, I was doing my job. And then I got pregnant, which was amazing, right? When you get pregnant, you can either, you can go one of two ways, right? Most of us, though, diets, inhibitions, restrictions, go out the window unless they are medically advised. And I definitely did. I gained um, about 50 pounds, I think, with Kennedy. And again, I need to just make sure that you understand when I am saying numbers like this, it is because, or, you know, I'm not saying them with a negative connotation to anyone else, but I am saying them with the negativity that is ingrained in my brain, okay? So I am doing my work to try and get over that, but please just understand this is my experience and this is how I have internalized my experience. So again, doing the work <laughs> to try and get rid of it, but... Uh, Bear with me. Funny story that sticks out in my mind is when I was actually in labor and the nurse came in to order, you know, get ready to order the epidural and she asked me what my weight was out loud. My husband was sitting over there and I lied to her 
about my weight so that my husband wouldn't hear my actual weight. I, <laughs> when he fell asleep, I had to tell the nurse. I was like, actually, um, I lied to you about my weight. It's actually this. And she's like, good thing you told me because they would have given you an incorrect dose of your epidural. Like, how pathetic is that? That I couldn't admit to myself, to my husband, to my medical team what my actual weight was because I was so embarrassed by a number. It makes me so mad at myself now. Um, But... I just, I couldn't bring myself to verbalize the number that was on the scale the last time I was at the doctor. And I just, that story still makes me sick to my stomach because I feel like it's probably not an uncommon tale, right? Like how many times have you, how many of you actually have the correct weight on your driver's license, right? Like... (laughs) No one, I don't have the right weight on my driver's license. Are you kidding me? But also, I feel like weight on your driver's license is silly. But going through the whole pregnancy and then postpartum, that does a whole craziness on your, not only on your body, but on your whole mental state too, right? Like now you're looking in the mirror and you're like, whoa, this body just completely transformed to carrying this life. Now it's feeding this life. And what is it doing? This does not look like the body that I'm used to. And a whole mental trip uh, for those who know it all too well. But it did get to the point where I was ready to quote unquote bounce back, right? The pressure that we have to bounce back is ridiculous. But that pressure was there it still is there for you know new moms I'm sure but I felt this pressure to shed the baby weight because shedding weight has been part of my psyche for a very 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 long time so in 2017 at the end of 2017 I looked up this new diet called keto interesting, right? And it kind of made sense to me. Get rid of sugars, get rid of carbs, because I did Atkins when I was in high school. So yeah, sure, this kind of makes sense. So I tried it out, lost a few pounds, but I just didn't know how to make it sustainable. So a year went by trying to figure out what to do. And then I worked with personal trainers. I worked with, you know, I went on Weight Watchers again. And the irony is I remember bringing Kennedy to a Weight Watchers meeting. Granted, she was only a couple months old. But like when I think back as to how impactful going to Weight Watchers meetings with my parents was, um, and not in a good way, (laughs) uh, it makes me a little mad. Granted, again, she wasn't influenced by it because she was too little. But yeah, I don't think I could bring her to one of those meetings now. Anyway, I went to a doctor, like new. um, We had moved and everything. So I found a new doctor locally. Went to her, told her what was going on. I'm like, listen, I am dieting. I am exercising, but nothing is working. So she suggested that I go on a diet called the Ducan diet. If you're familiar with this diet, you know that it's crazy. (laughs) And looking back, the fact that my doctor put me on it is, should have been a red flag. Should have been a red flag then. But nope, there's more red flags in the future. (laughs) Um, So anyway, she puts me on this diet. Basically what it is, it is a very, very restrictive diet in the sense that you are not allowed to have fruits and vegetables in the first phase. You can have unlimited fat-free dairy, and unli- which is like so funny now to me, um, now, knowing what I know, <laughs> and unlimited lean proteins as long as you eat a tablespoon of oat bran a day. Like, guys, this was the weirdest diet, but I think I lost like 11 pounds, okay? So I was like, oh, wow, 11 pounds, yay. But again, not sustainable at all. This was not something that I could maintain doing, especially in the fact that I was working in the food industry. Like, sorry, Wolfgang doesn't have oat bran check <laughs> hanging around or fat-free string cheese, but 
Anyway, I I quickly pivoted back to keto in July of 2019 because there had been such a surge of information, a surge of resources between social media and blogs and Pinterest and everything. It was so much more um, within reach and so much more, it felt more sustainable. I say it felt more sustainable at that point. Here we are, summer of 2019. I'm working out more than I ever have for sure. I am re-adopting keto and I'm losing 40 pounds, which felt amazing. Um, I am sharing my journey on my Instagram account and having so many people reach out to me and connect with me about this weight loss journey and feeling like I can actually support them and feeling like I can um, encourage them and build this community of others who are uh, trying to get to the same goal as I am. So this, I felt amazing. Like this is exactly what I wanted. And in my head, it was because I was in this new stronger, leaner body, that I was attracting this community. And that's what felt good. That's what made me feel validated. So in my head, the weight loss is what led to feeling valuable and feeling validated. Ironically, or maybe not so ironically, This was also when I felt like I was at the peak of my career. I was becoming the face of our department and doing all of our corporate videos and hosting content on, you know, Wolfgang social media and everything. So I'm quickly realizing that somewhere in my brain, I correlated my weight loss with success and with accomplishment and with empowerment and with confidence and not having that job anymore and being a, as I've now coined it, the domestic lifestyle manager, not a stay-at-home mom, I think somewhere in my head, I still need to lose weight in order to feel that purpose and that confidence again. And I don't want to be there. I think that might be the first time I've ever said that out loud. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this is what we call a breakthrough. (laughs) Wow, happened right here on Casey's Corner. Yeah, I think that um, that's what it was. It was the weight loss made me feel valuable. It made me feel validated. Because now I had an experience that I could share with others and help them. And as I have said, my goal through basically (laughs) my goal ever since I was that little kid working for Radio Disney has been to share stories, share experiences, and be a positive resource and influence on others. I felt like I was hitting my goal and reaching my goal, but then it kind of stopped. The weight loss stopped. It plateaued, which scientifically, that's what happens with diets, right? And I can pinpoint it. It was um, the holidays of 2020. We went back east to be with family. And I just didn't restrict myself. I felt like after the hell year of 2020, I wasn't going to restrict myself. And I look back and I realize that the reason I was so successful or so... I don't want to use the word success successful at this point. I think the word I want to use is the reason I was so disciplined during that time, during 2020, was because in a time where I couldn't control 
anything that was going on, where information was being thrown at me every which way, and I didn't know what way was up, right? As we all felt. I think that it was food and what I ate and what I consumed and how I moved my body was the one thing that I could control in a time where I had no control over anything else. So that was why I could be so disciplined was because I had no excuse not to be, right? I was controlling what food we ordered. And I say ordered because for a very long time, we only got our groceries delivered, right? Um, And I could control what I was eating when I was eating because I was home. I had nothing else to do. It was just Kennedy and I. And I think that, you know, I look back and I realize that when we went home for the holidays, I just ate all the things. (laughs) I didn't care. I... It was finally a break for me to be able to enjoy life, enjoy time. And for me, food is comforting and for so many of us, right? Like, So that's where it started. And then in my head, I knew how to get back to where I was because hell, I've already lost 40 pounds. I can do it again. It's no problem. Well, guess what? The second time around, it's not as easy because your body has now gotten used to eliminating that food group because when that's really what it is you're eliminating a food group so you're having that calorie deficit or you're shocking your body into now finding another source to burn fat right so anyway um and this is again all little information that I've been pulling in the past few months as I'm doing the work So we're back from the holidays, right? And now we start house hunting and now I start packing and now we start the moving and the construction and everything. And this whole cycle of controlled and disciplined eating is now very out of whack for me. So what was working before wasn't working now. And I started a very dangerous spiral of villainizing foods that really were healthy, nutritious, and then leaning on these, you know, foods that were labeled keto friendly because they were convenient and they were easy and I didn't have to be home food prepping or meal prepping and getting all these fresh ingredients and putting together cute little like ham and cheese roll-ups or whatever it is. I now needed to go for the convenience, which really is just packed with artificial sweeteners or artificial starches and things like that. So the things that were working before, I now didn't have time to make it work for me anymore. So here we are in a new house, in a new city, new or new town, um, with a new schedule and a new routine, and Kennedy is now back in school, and I am just fed up with feeling so lethargic and feeling tired and irritable all the time, and I'm like, what is going on? I need to figure out what's going on with my body. So I went back to that doctor <laughs> who put me on the Ducan diet, and I explained to her, I'm like, listen, here I am in a a new schedule, new town, whatever, but I'm still, I'm getting back into the gym. I'm working out three, four times a week. I am cutting out carbs again. I am, you know, eating a high fat diet, low carb. Why can't I lose this weight? She looked at my body makeup. Oh, let me talk about this for one second. Oh, really quick, I wanna deviate because what I did early on My gym has this program that they offer. It was a full body assessment. And what that did, it doesn't just mean I got on the scale, they wrote my number down. No, so I did this whole workup of different um, like metabolic tests, um, stress tests, fitness tests, a full 3D composition of my body, 3D scan of my body. And I got this full workup of how my body basically is working, right? And what I found so interesting was with one of the metabolic tests that they did, my body actually burns fat and carbs at the exact same rate. So in everyone's body, it does vary. So sometimes, yes, like it does make more sense for you to eliminate carbs because your body doesn't do a good job of burning them. But apparently for me, 
it was 50. Well, no, sorry. It was like 46 and 54. Does that math add up? I think that math adds up. Anyway, it was like 46 and ish, right? So it wasn't exactly 50-50. And I realized, I was like, okay, so carbs aren't so bad. I can eat the apple. I can eat the banana. The things that I dubbed as carbs, I was, this is the problem. I was weighing an apple and a dinner roll the same way. And I can't, you have to remember that things are made up differently. And like fiber is such a big part of things. And listen, I'm not a nutritionist. We will have guests to talk about that in the future, I promise. But there's definitely something to be said for learning how your body works and Just do some Googling, man. Like see where you can do a 3D scan or a full body assessment or a metabolic test. Um, There are definitely resources out there that you can find to understand how your body works and then how you can actually work better for your body. Little tidbit. I had this scan, this assessment and everything to bring to my doctor. So I brought it to the doctor. I'm like, listen, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm eating. This is what my, um, you know, my regular workout routine is. I'm showing her the app and, you know, it's tracking. I'm showing her my watch. <laughs> like what is going on that my body is not adapting to this fitness and this diet and everything. So she prescribed me a water pill. That was red flag number two. I felt like that was so irresponsible. It was so like 1990s, like, oh, here's a wa- here's a pill, water, water pill, just figure it out, you know? I'll make you just pee it out. I don't know. Just that experience made me take a step back and kind of reassess and see what do I really want to change? Am I so desperate to change my body that I'm going to take some sort of water pill? Or do I want to change the way that I think about food and the way that I think about my body and the relationship that I have between the two? And that's kind of where I went. One good thing to come out of that doctor visit, though, was she did a full blood work panel, which was great. Um, You know, I wanted to make sure that there wasn't something going on with my thyroid. That's usually a very big issue with weight, right? Um, And I only have half of a thyroid. I had a tumor on my thyroid years and years ago, got it removed. I only have half of it now. Um, And I assumed maybe something's up with that. Nope, completely normal thyroid panel. Okay. Um, What I did learn though was that my cholesterol was through the roof and borderline needing medication. So that was alarming. And I'm like, for sure that has to do with the high fat diet with keto as well as genetics. Okay. So I'm not just saying it was the diet side of it. Genetics as well. My dad has it. His family, all high cholesterol. So Basically, I took that information that I had from inside of my body, right? I had the full body assessment. I have the blood work panel, all this information. And now I want to find someone who can truly help me understand the food side, a nutritionist or a dietitian, right? So I contact a few of them locally. I meet with them. And this is something that I feel like is really, really important. And this could be any sort of doctor or therapist or anything. You need to date your doctors, okay? And I say that because so many people feel like they are stuck with their doctor. They are stuck with their therapist. They are stuck with, you know, whoever they come across first. And sure, there are restrictions with insurance, and I understand that, but There's going to be more than one option. There's got to be more than one option. Advocate for yourself and see who is the right fit. I went through three, yeah, three, yeah, three nutritionists (laughs) to find the right person. So things that I felt like just weren't working were when they were telling me, okay, so here's your calorie budget. Here's the tool to use to track everything. Here's what we're going to, you know, don't label foods as good or bad, 
but we're going to give you a color coding system instead. Green is good. <laughs> or green, you can have as much of as you want. Yellow, meh. And red, very little. That's labeling it good or bad, right? So it took me a while to realize that I don't want to be on a diet anymore. I am so sick of feeling like I have to be on a diet, okay? I don't want to live my life. Like, this was the problem. This is when I knew it was a problem, and this is where I immediately hit the pause button. I would be hungry, and I would open up the refrigerator, and I would look at the fresh ingredients that are in my fridge. I would look at the quinoa that I had meal prepped, you know, that I had made a batch of so I would have it easily accessible. I would look at all these different ingredients that were at my fingertips and realize how much work it would have to be to track everything, to weigh out all the ingredients, to then log it into the app and realize that I don't want to live my life like that anymore. I can't live my life like that. I enjoy being out. I enjoy being with my family and with my husband and trying new things and like, hello, I don't walk around with a scale to figure out how many ounces of meat I'm eating, right? So basically, I had to no, basically I have to, because I it's I'm not done. I'm not done with this work. I am still trying to figure out how to find peace with food, which sounds so stupid in my head when I say it over and over again. And I feel like it's such a cliche or so, um, it just, it doesn't feel like it holds much weight in my head finding peace with food. Like, what the hell does that mean? But for me, it means not having to clear the plate, not feeling like I am never going to have this dish again, so I have to eat it all now. There are definitely some loud triggers in my head that for me are very hard to silence. One being you have to finish everything that's on your plate right? Did anyone else grow up with the clean plate club or feeling like you're offending someone if you don't eat it all or if you don't take seconds or if you don't try something that's on, you know, the dinner table um, or feeling like, this is another one for me, feeling like you don't know when you're going to be able to have this again, so I need to eat it all now or because I am completely stuck in the diet culture or feeling like there's a cheat day or if I'm having a cheat meal of I need to eat this whole thing because this is my time to do it. So I need to eat it all now, right? Because tomorrow is when I'm going to get back on track. Tomorrow is when I'm going to eat healthy. So listen, there, <laughs> there's so much work to be done, right? And I am committing myself to doing the work and understanding what is it that I want out of this, right? What is the goal? Is the goal acceptance and acceptance of the current state of my body, my current health, or is the goal change and um, achieving a certain number on the scale? And what does that number on the scale actually mean to me? Does that, you know, do I equate myself with a number on the scale? Or it's so funny, we so often equate our self-worth to like what we're eating, right? Like, oh, I had a cheat day. Oh, no, I did so bad today. Oh, I did so good today. I ate healthy. Like, these are the things that we're telling ourselves and the patterns that we're paving. That we are actually paving these patterns in our neuro pathways to believe these things. And there's just so much work to be done to level the playing field a little bit and not get stuck in these traps and not get stuck in these ways of thinking. And that's really what I'm hoping to get out of this and what I can hope to sh hopefully share with you guys too. Well, this turned into a much more in-depth episode of Casey's Corner than I think I realized it was going to be. Um, but it felt good. And I appreciate you guys allowing me to have this platform and 
share my heart and just kind of talk about something that was really weighing me down in all the ways. Uh, So I'm glad that we can have this conversation. I want it to be a conversation. Please reach out with questions, with thoughts and comments. Um, You can send me a message over on Instagram at it's Casey Potts. Please note the new Instagram handle or send me an email, leave some comments. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to the FPE network so you can see more shows to come. If you're listening via podcast, be sure to subscribe on Apple and on Spotify. I just, again, thank you for letting me do this. I can't wait to bring you some guests that will be really great resources on this topic in the next few weeks. And we'll have some fun very soon too, I promise, with some fun guests. And, you know, I'm just, I want to just keep on inspiring, motivating, educating, and entertaining. So I appreciate you all. See you real soon.